This quick tutorial is going to show you how to set up Gorilla on a Macintosh with uh, multiple user accounts. And the best thing to do if you are in a lab situation uh, with multiple Macs and you have an admin account on each Mac and then you have a user account, the best thing to do is to set up a separate user account just for the Gorilla user. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So. Let's go into the uh, system settings, and if you go to uh, users and groups, you can see here that there are two users here. There's an admin, which is uh, me, with full access privileges, and then there's a standard account here for another user. Now, I'm going to create a third one, which is for the Gorilla users. So let me go ahead and do that and click on Add Account put in my admin password in order to do that. And I'm going to just call the uh, account Gorilla user. And by default, if you create the user, the account name for the home folder will be Gorilla user lowercase, all one word, which is totally fine. Uh, for the password, uh, we want to make this simple for all the Gorilla users that are going to be using the Gorilla in the lab. So I'm just going to call it uh, gorilla for the password. We don't really have much uh, issues with security here since it's a standard uh, uh, user account. We're going to click on create user and it's going to create now a brand new user called gorilla user. Okay, so now I'm going to log out of uh, the admin account and log in to the user account to check it out. Okay, we're logged back in to uh, as Gorilla user. Now you really can't tell much of a difference because it looks really the same. So what I'm going to do real quick is just modify the background for the Gorilla user. Uh, I'm going to go into uh, wallpaper here and I'm going to change the background here to not that color. No, I'm going to add, I'm going to change the background here to a Gorilla background. And so now, if you go to users and groups, uh, you will see that the Gorilla user is the standard, then the other user here, and then my, my, uh, is right, my user is right there, the admin. So I am now in the uh, Gorilla user account, okay? And if I open up a finder window and go to documents, Okay, there's going to be nothing there because, of course, this is a brand new user. As such, they, the user cannot launch a Gorilla because the Gorilla data files uh, reside in the Documents folder. Now, if you go to Applications, you should see the Gorilla folder, uh, I'm sorry, the Gorilla application here. Now, this is the Gorilla application. However, if you double-click the Gorilla application now, it's going to uh, not find Gorilla. It's going to uh, launch FileMaker Pro and ask you to accept the terms. You're going to not want to do this because this is not going to help you, okay? This is the application that runs Gorilla. But again, since we are in a user account, uh, which does not have admin access, it has a brand new documents folder without the Gorilla files in here. So we're going to move the files, or copy the files rather, from the documents folder from the admin account into the Gorilla user account to make this work. So I'm now going to have to log out of the Gorilla user account and go back to the admin account. All right, I'm now logged back in as admin. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up a finder window and I'm going to go to documents. And here, let me show it in this view here. You can see that we're working with Gorilla 8 now, not Gorilla 7. Uh, here is the Gorilla 8 folder, which you did not see in the Documents folder of the Gorilla user. All right. So all we have to do now is copy this entire set of files. This is after initial install. Okay, you need to install it first as admin. And we're going to copy this entire set, this folder, with this hierarchy, just like that, to the... Uh, Gorilla user documents folder. Now, I'm going to use a USB drive that I have connected here. So all I'm going to do is literally 
drag this entire folder onto the USB drive and it's going to begin copying. Now it's about, uh, as you can see, a little over a gig. So you want to make sure you have enough room on the drive. And after that copies, what I'm going to do, I'm going to let that copy and, and move forward here, uh, flash forward. But what just to explain what I'm going to do, I'm going to let that finish copying. I'm going to log out of the admin account and log back in to the Gorilla user account. And of course, the USB drive will still be attached and we're gonna copy those files back to the documents folder. So I'm gonna let this go for a bit and we'll be back in just a minute, logged in as the Gorilla user. Okay, I'm now logged back in as the Gorilla user account. And if I go into create a finder window here and go to documents, you can see again, there's nothing here. If I go to applications, you will of course see the Gorilla application because it was installed uh, under the admin account. So I've copied, I went back to the admin account and I copied the contents of the Gorilla 8 folder onto my flash drive, my USB drive. So I open it up here and here it is right there. And if I open that up again, you will see these are the folders that are required. It's gotta be just like this with the name of the folder. At this point, it's Gorilla 8.04, could be 8.05 or 8.1, and then these files here. So I'm going to take this entire folder now and literally drag it into my documents folder. And this is gonna take a while to uh, copy because again, it's a little over a gig. So I'm gonna uh, pause the video now for a moment and come right back after this has copied fully into the documents folder. Okay, so the Gorilla 8 folder has finished copying into the documents folder. And let's just verify that. We now have a Gorilla 8 folder with the Gorilla 804 data files right here, the launch Gorilla uh, file and the other folders here. I'm going to close my USB drive and I'm going to attempt to launch Gorilla now from the documents folder uh, logged into the Gorilla user account. And again, we get this issue. So all you have to do here is go ahead and select the I accept the terms checkbox and click accept and Gorilla should launch. And this is very important now. It's going to say Gorilla would like to access files in your documents folder. You cannot select, don't allow, you must select OK. So we're going to click OK. And we are now launched as a Gorilla user into Gorilla. Let's test this again. We'll close this notification. I'm going to close that. We're going to quit Gorilla. Okay. And we are going to select the Launch Gorilla here in the Documents folder. And let's see if it launches properly. Here we go, 8.04, uh, build 0012, which is good. And we are up, okay? So now the next thing I wanna show you is how, how students or whoever is using the Gorilla uh, uh, login, the Gorilla user login to save their files, okay? So let's say they are working on a schedule. Uh, this is a demo schedule here. Let me just quickly rename the schedule to student schedule, okay? And the student can go ahead now and work on their schedule and what have you. And when they're done with the session, uh, here it is right here, they need to save it to their flash drive or USB drive. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the three dots. We're gonna click on other for save options. There's a video here on how to save your schedule if you wanted to check that out. And we're going to leave the name as student schedule. We're gonna select other because it's going to give me a path. So I'm gonna click on save and it says you will be prompted to save, to select a save location. 
we are going to select the USB drive and we are just put it on the root uh, f uh, folder here on the root drive. Click select. And the save is complete. Let's verify that. Let us hide Gorilla and go to the USB drive. And you can see here, this is the uh, student schedule. If you, uh, if I hover over the name here, there we go. Student schedule underscore GRS dot FMP12. That's the extension. So the student now has, or the user, now has their schedule on their USB drive. They can now take this USB drive, eject it from the, uh, the computer, and go and use this onto another computer that has a Gorilla user account. Now, let me show you how to load it if they do that. So we're going to close this USB drive. We'll close this up again. We'll go into Gorilla. Now, they should also delete their schedule here because if they leave uh, and take their USB drive with them, their schedule is still here in the project manager on in the local draw uh, local uh, documents folder. So th there's really two schedules here. There's one here, the, the the original, and the copy or the backup, which is here. So they really should get into the habit of deleting their schedule, just so uh, it won't be uh, here in the project manager if other students want to want to log on. Okay, so if I wanted to delete the schedule, I would go to the three dots here and select delete. And it's going to give you a warning. And we're going to go ahead and delete it. It is now deleted from the project manager on the local documents folder. However, the schedule is still saved here in the USB drive. So let's pretend that we're going to another computer or even the same computer on the next session or the next day or the next week. We will, uh, of course, the student or user will plug in their USB drive here. They will then go to the project manager, and of course, their schedule should not be here. They can then select down here the load schedule folder button, and it's going to ask to load a schedule from documents, which is where the schedules are normally saved, but we're going to click on other. We're going to find the USB drive, select the schedule to load, and then click on the select button. And this is the proper way to load a schedule or a budget. If you're going to do a budget, instead of going down here to the folder here, we go down to this folder right here and load a budget. And as you can see, here is the schedule loaded uh, when the ball stops spinning uh, and the uh, uh, the uh, icons here go back to uh, colored, uh, colored icons as opposed to gray. That is telling you that the schedule is now available to load. We can click on the schedule and the student can continue to work on their schedule. To, again, manager is where the student or the user will always delete or save their schedule or budgets. Same thing here. Okay? So that's basically how you set up a Macintosh with multiple user accounts. It's best to just set up a single Gorilla user account that, uh, that can be accessed with the same password on multiple computers. And you just have to do that once. Now, once this is all set up, I'm going to quit Gorilla here. Uh, this does not have to be done again. Uh, if I were to log out here of this user and go into the admin user, I will still be able to access Gorilla. But of course, the documents folder will be accessing a different documents folder. And we have the Gorilla 8 folder now copied uh, as a separate application, basically, data files. Well, the application is the same in the, as you probably know, the application, uh, whether you are in as a Gorilla user uh, login or an admin login, that doesn't change. The application is the same. It's the data files right here. The data files that, of course, are unique to the user that is logged in in the documents folder. And again, they just need to have access to the documents folder here in the Gorilla 8 folder. Another way to make sure that you have access, that the Gorilla user has access to these files and in the documents folder, is to go into system and secure uh, system settings and go into privacy and security 
and then select the Files and Folders option. And here you should see the Gorilla application. Now, you only see this application after you launch it. So if you have not launched this uh, application yet, you probably will not see it here. So you do have to try to launch it. And that's where you get that error that it cannot find the files. So if you select the uh, drop down here, you have to make sure that the Gorilla uh, application uh, allows or access to the documents folder. So you have to make sure this is checked. Uh, if this is not checked, of course, uh, it'll give you the, uh, the, the uh, password here, the admin password to undo the check. Um, but you have to make sure that access is given to the documents folder. Otherwise, you will, you will not be able to, uh, to access the Gorilla files. So that's another way to check to make sure that access is given to the documents folder as a Gorilla user.